Okay, then we have here other... Okay, WBC Anomaly, we have here the May Heglen and we have your Dolly Amato bodies. So, the May Heglen is primarily, this is a light blue uh, cytoplasmic granules, primarily made up of your uh, RNA. Okay, so, this is also shaded here with the giant platelet, but that one is thrombocytopenia. So, large platelet size, but decrease in WBC count. So, we have here the difference between your Mayheglen and your Doliamato bodies. So, Mayheglen here is made up of your mRNA, whereas your Doliamato body is made up of your rRNA. Then, we have here the periodic shift here as to the cytochemical stain. So, this, your Mayheglen will give a negative result, whereas your Doliamato body will give a positive result. In terms of the size, so, your Mayheglen is much larger compared to your Dolly Amato bodies. In terms of the shape, so mRNA here would, I may have would have spindle shape, whereas your Dolly Amato bodies would have the round shape. Another one we have here the toxic granulation, characterized here by the dark blue granules, which resemble your Aldo Riley anomaly in terms of its morphology. But in this case, toxic granulation, very prominent granules that will be associated here with a severe infection or even in your bacterial infection. Okay, the next one, we have your abnormality in the function of your WBC. So, we have your lazy leukocyte syndrome. Your lazy leukocyte syndrome characterized here by the problem both in the chemotactic activity or ability to go to the site of the area where there's a pathogen. Another one, we have here the uh, problem in the random activity. Job syndrome, the other hand, characterized here by defective in the chemotactic ability our activity, but we still have the normal random activity. Another one, we have here the chronic granulomatous disease, characterized here by the absence of the enzyme NADPH oxidase. So this is the enzyme that would kill your ingested pathogen. What's going to happen here is that your leukocyte could eventually ingest the pathogen, but eventually could not kill that one, and therefore we saw here the recurrent bacterial infection. So it it just ingests but could not kill. The patient would have here a recurrent bacterial infection manifestation. Okay, so we have the test for that. We have your nitro blue tetrasolium test. Nitro blue, uh, nitro blue tetrasolium here is a dye which is colorless. And then if you have your specimen that should be converted here to blue black formacin if your WB is capable of killing that one. So in the absence of the enzyme in the patient oxidase, could could it kill that one? So what's going to happen here is that your nitro blue tetrasolium dye here will still remain as colorless. Did not convert here to blue black, meaning to say there will be defective here in the phagocytosis activity. Okay, now we go to the defective uh, monocyte macrophages. I have also here the histocytes. The first one we have here the Gaucher disease. Gaucher disease here characterized by deficiency and the enzyme beta-glucosidase, which eventually result here the accumulation of your beta-glucocerebroside. And it's characterized here by the cytoplasm with characteristic um, wrinkled, paper, crumpled, or onion skin appearance, or a paper cytoplasm as well. Then we have here the Neiman peak disease, characterized here by deficiency in the enzymes, uh, sphingomyelinase, which eventually result here the accumulation of the sphingomyelin, that one would have characteristic na foamy cytoplasm. Then we have also here your Tay-Sachs, characterized here by deficiency of the enzyme hexaminidase A, that result here accumulation in your ganglioside GM2 with the vacuolated cytoplasm. Then we have your side hoof, characterized by deficiency both in your hexaminidase A and hexaminidase B, which eventually result here in the accumulation of your ganglioside and glycolipids. And that would also have here the vacuolated cytoplasm. Then C blue histocytes characterized here by the presence of your bluish green pigment in a cytoplasm. You call that was reseroids. And this one would have here a known enzyme deficiency. Okay, and lastly, we have here your hairy cell. So hairy cell here is your lymphocyte with a characteristic hair like projection. This one is associated with your hairy cell leukemia. This would be characterized by a tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. 
So we have your acid phosphate test here. So this will only give a positive result for your hairy cell plus your B lymphocyte, but not for your B lymphocytes. Upon addition of your tartaric acid, so if you try to uh, measure here the activity, so your hairy cell leukemia will not be inhibited here by your tartrate, whereas for your B and the T lymphocyte will be inhibited here by your tartrate. Okay, so making this one tartrate resistant acid phosphatase, that's for your hair cell leukemia. Okay, so this is the end here. This is the end here of the discussion with our WBC anomaly. Okay, thank you.